Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy and your great love. We thank you for the testimony that we just heard, Lord. Oh, God, it's because of your mercy that we're not consumed. And we just stop by tonight to say thank you for all that you continue to do for us, how you continue to prove yourself over and over and over again, how you intervene in, in situation after situation. We just want to thank you. My God, we want to praise you for sparing the lives of the kings, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for healing uh, the brother that minister Beverly prayed for and bringing it back to her remembrance that he, he was the one that she prayed for and healed her from cancer, oh God. We know that you're a God that can do anything. And you keep encouraging us, oh God. We, we thank you for it. We appreciate you. We ask you now that you would bless this Bible class tonight. Let your word go forth with clarity and power. Let my mind be in sync with your mind that we're going to say all the things that you would have us to say uh, as we engage in the study of your word tonight. Uh, we'll thank you and give you praise for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. Continue to bless the sick and afflicted. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Once again, those of you that are that are joining joining us via live stream, we apologize for being late tonight. We have had extreme technical difficulties, and uh, we're just now getting online uh, tonight. We have had to use a hotspot actually to get online tonight, so the angle is a little uh, warped. But we're here in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, uh, uh, Lady Horde and Bishop Horde. Sister Tiana D. Woods, T, praise the Lord, Dr. Bergantz, as my sister Angela Garrett and uh, Eric Garrett, praise the Lord, everybody. And so just so happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight. We have been, uh, for the past few weeks, talking about serving the Lord and service to the Lord. Serving the Lord and service to the Lord. And I would hope by now uh, that, that we have a good dose of, of what it means to uh, serve the Lord and, and to actually be of service to the Lord. I would hope that we would have we've had a good dose of that tonight. So we're going to move on uh, from that for a space of time tonight because it is springtime. <laughs> Amen. And springtime, springtime around Christ's temple means that we have a spring revival. Yes. Come on, come on, talk about for me. A spring yes. revival. Yes. Amen. So we start to think about, oh, uh oh, oh, uh oh, Isaiah 40 and 8. Isaiah 48, what does it say, everybody? The grass wither it, the flower will fade it, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The grass wither it, the flower will fade it, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. All right, so let's get back to uh, what I was saying. It's springtime uh, on the calendar. It's springtime also in our souls and in our hearts because we are all familiar with uh, our annual spring revival. Amen. So we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to talk about the meaning of revival. We're going to uh, take some time to talk about what it means to, to be revived. We know that in springtime, things uh, that have been dormant all winter long, uh, uh, the, the flowers have gone away, the, the leaves have, have shed, the trees rather have shed their leaves, uh, and uh, they have gone away for a season because winter was upon the scene, right? Amen. And but but winter has had its space. Winter, we've had uh, cold weather. We've had a, a mild winter. Uh, we we've had uh, sunshine. We've had rain. And now the, the seasons have flipped, and it's it's springtime, and it's time for those things that have been dormant all went along to start to come back to life. Uh, how many of you have seen the dandelions in your yard already? Well, to my chagrin, I. I uh, my son cut the grass yesterday, and and uh, when I stopped uh, by the house this evening, I saw the, all the dandelions popping up. I said, that's a sure sign that it's springtime. It's a sure sign that I got to go and get a big bag of Scott's turf built uh, to knock that out. Amen. To knock that out because it's springtime. We want, want, want the lawn to look lush and, and wonderful without any dandelions. You know, dandelions in and of themselves are not bad unless they're on your lawn. Right. <laughs> Amen. I, I have nothing against the dandelion as long as it's not on my lawn. Amen. But but, but we have come uh, to that time uh, where things uh, awake from their sleep. Uh, the, the time that um, uh, 
there was a reinvigoration. There was there was new life. Amen. How many of you know that that in the life of a Christian, in the life of a saint, uh, we have periods, we have times that we go through dormant seasons in our saved lives. Amen. But we, as as a saved person, as we talked about it as as someone or people that are serving the Lord. Uh, we we have to battle all kinds of obstacles, and one of those obstacles mainly being our mind. Lord, help us help us to sustain our minds. Lord, Lord, help us to let your mind be in our mind. Amen. Uh, that, that we might do all of the things that you would have us to do. Uh, we know that living this life, living this life at times, uh, can be a cumbersome adventure. Amen. That's because the devil is always fighting. Uh, the scripture lets us know that when I would do good, evil is always present. When I want to do the right thing, when, I, when, when the Holy Ghost is telling me to do the right thing, evil is always uh, rearing its ugly head, trying to interrupt my service to the Lord. Amen? Amen. He'll, he, and he knows what you like. He knows what you like. He knows how to push your buttons. Come on and talk back to me, somebody. He knows He knows how to, to upset you. He knows how to make you say, I'm going to put my Holy Ghost down. And you should never put your Holy Ghost down. Once you put your Holy Ghost down, but he knows how to make you say, I'm going to put my Holy Ghost down for a moment and give them a piece of my mind. You don't have that much mind anyway. You better keep all the mind that you have. You don't have enough to give away. You don't have enough to give away in the first place. So you better keep all the mind that you have. But, uh, but the fact is, the fact is that uh, we encounter we encounter things that are roadblocks to us uh, trying to be all that we can be. Our flesh, Woo, the lust of the flesh, the, the the lust of the eye, and the pride of life are always things that that uh, combine together to try to overtake us, to try try to triple team us. Amen. The devil puts things in our eye game. And, uh, you know, there are things that we can't, we, we, we're not walking around blind, so that we, we see all kinds of things. And we depend on the Holy Ghost. We depend on the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us into all truth. But, my brothers and sisters, the, the, those things, the, the, the devil is still there. Amen? He's still there, and we have to fight the good fight of faith. We're always fighting, always fighting. Uh, uh, to, to, to keep our right minds and, and to keep uh, keep a life of, of substance with the Lord uh, in our view. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we're going to talk about the meaning of revival. Just like you uh, just like you take your, your, your body to the doctor to, to get a checkup. Amen. Uh, you know, revival is a time that you, you can take introspection on your spiritual being. Revival is a time for everybody to take a good look at yourself, a good look at who you are, not who you think you are, but a good look at who you really authentically are. Amen? Amen. 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 So, so re revival gives us a chance to get refocused uh, because, because out here, out here, uh, uh, living this life, that there, there are times when we have a tendency to lose our focus. Come on, you can be real with me tonight. You can be real. You can be real. Uh, I've, I've been in this thing. I've been well, I've been saved for almost forty-eight years, and I'm talking from personal experience. There, there are times. There are times, man. You can, you can uh, have your focus be skewed. It's, it's, it's nothing but the goodness of the Lord. It's nothing but the mercies of God that brings us back when we allow the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us into all truth. When we allow the Holy Ghost to be the comforter that it is supposed to be. When we allow it to talk to us. And not only talk to us, but we allow uh, our ears to listen and we allow our minds to obey what the Holy Ghost is telling us to do. We run into problems, run into situations, as they say, when, when the Holy Ghost speaks to you and you ignore what the Holy Ghost is saying to you, you go ahead and do uh, what your, your mind tells you to do and, and uh, you ignore what the Holy Ghost is clearly telling you to do. 
It happens sometimes. So my brothers and sisters, we need we need to refocus. We need to, to be reinvigorated. We need to, to, uh, to, to have an appreciation for the Holy Ghost being on the inside of us. We need to have an appreciation for the fact that God transformed us by the renewing of our mind. So it's, it's important that while, while the grass is, is starting to get green, while the birds are starting to chirp, while the flowers are starting to bud, all signs of spring, all spring things, it's, it's important that we take inventory of ourselves. Revival is a good time to take inventory of your spiritual life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Have I been assembling? Have, have I been assembling or have I failed uh, to assemble myself together with the saints as the word of the Lord tells us to do? Even more so in the last days. Have I been ingesting, reading my word? Have I been listening to the word every opportunity that, that I get? How have I shown love to my brother and my sister? Have I, have I looked out for the poor and the homeless? Have I, have I done the things that, that Christ, uh, Christ provoked us to do? Time to take introspection. We talk about talk about revival. It's time to take introspection because you know uh, most of the time we're not all that some of us say we are. I, I get worried. I get worried. I get worried. I get worried, y'all. When and when folks tell me or they think that they don't have any room for improvement, they think they the down. They think they got it made. They think uh, some some even have the. Um, I don't want to say audacity, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, the audacity to say that I, I, as good as I've been, as saved as I've been, as holy as I have lived, as, as if there is, no, uh, there is no room for improvement. I don't care how long you've been in this thing, my brothers and sisters. I don't care how long uh, it's been since you spoke in tongues. I don't care how much you read your word. I don't care how much a shouting you do. All of us from the pulpit to the door have some room yes. for improvement. All of us have some room to be renewed. All of us have some room to be revived. Am I in the right church tonight? No, no, we don't, we don't have it made on a flowery bed of ease. As long as you have breath in your body, uh, I'm working toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, I am. I'm working. All of us from the pulpit to the door are working. Somebody says, save to be saved. Lord have mercy. And so revival refers to a spiritual awakening, awakening from a state of dormancy or stagnation in the life of a believer. It encompasses the resurfacing of a love for God, an appreciation of God's holiness, a passion for his word and his church, a convicting awareness of corporate sin. Oh, yes, we, we got to be aware. We got to be aware, my brothers and sisters, because, because when, uh, when you allow yourself to slip, when, when you allow yourself to lose focus, your tolerance, your tolerance for things that, that uh, you shouldn't have a, a tolerance for diminishes. Amen? Amen. Right. You will find yourself, you'll find yourself uh, doing things that you would not have done when you first believed. You would not have entertained, you would, would not have uh, even brought into your space because, because you, you've grown Dare I say weak? So you find yourself find yourself with a tolerance uh, for for sin in your life that you would not have had tolerance for when you were focused. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with that.
Am I in the right church tonight? We lose passion for his word and his church. We lose the spirit of humility and a desire for repentance and growth and righteousness. Revival invigorates and sometimes deepens the believer's faith. Opening his or her eyes. To the truth in a fresh way. It generally involves the connotation of a fresh start. Isn't it wonderful that, that the Lord allows us to have a fresh start? Woo, well, we, while we're sitting up in here tonight, we better thank God for mercy. We better thank Him for grace. Somebody says he's the God of a second chance. He's the God of many chances. Lord have mercy. Uh, if, if, if he would reveal, if he would reveal some of the things that we have done since we got the Holy Ghost. Thank God that he's a God that keeps your secrets. And, and he, he keeps working on you. He keeps working on you, making you all that you should be. He keeps working on If you would just allow him, as he puts you on the potter's wheel, if you would just allow him to mold you and make you pliable enough to get you from earth to glory, he'll do all of that if you just allow him to do it. So we need, we need revival. We need revival. That's what revival is, to get refocused. To, 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 to make sure that I'm, I am intentional about uh, paying attention to my God. I'm intentional about paying attention to my behavior. Come on and talk back to me. A fresh start, a clean slate. Marking a new beginning of life lived in obedience to God. Revival breaks the charm and the power of the world. We need that, y'all. We, we need the power of the world, the charm of the world to be broken from us. Because uh, when you live in this world like we do, and we have so many things that, that are flirting with our senses. We got, we got so many things coming at us, so many uh, beliefs and so many philosophies coming at us. And if, if we're not careful, we'll begin to slide and uh, believe some of those philosophies. Find ourselves saying, uh, well, you know, uh, live and let live. How many of you know that, that uh, when, when you talk about revival, uh, you, you, you got to put... Put, put your, yourself back, put your priorities back in the right place. We've got to watch, watch the sins of omission and the sins of commission. Come on, talk back to me, y'all. People sometimes speak of the sins of commission and sins of omission. Sins of commission are those sinful actions that are proactively, proactively done. You willfully do it, lying, stealing. Those are examples of sins of commission. And a sin of omission is a sin that takes place because of not doing something that is right. You know to do good, but you don't do good. That's a sin of omission. Not praying, not standing up for what's right. Not sharing Christ with others. Am I in the right church tonight? Amen. So we we all need a revival. We all need uh, we all need to be refocused. We all need. Uh, to, to make sure, to be very sure that that we are walking in alignment with the tenets and the values of God. Because this world continues to put pressure on it. This world uh, continues to, to feed our minds. That's why you got to let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ. If you, if you let his mind be in you, then you can counteract the devil. The, and the devil is coming at us. 
Don't you fool yourself. I, I know you got the Holy Ghost. I know you, you're full of the Holy Ghost, but the devil is coming after you. And this flesh is not saved. I tell you all the time that that uh, uh, if you give this, this, this flesh the right opportunity, the right space, the right time, it will perform. You find yourself, you find yourself in the unenviable position of being out of alignment with God. Help us, Lord. I'm so glad. Let me say it again. I'm so glad that God gives us another chance. I'm, I'm so glad that he realizes our humanity. I'm so glad. That's right. And for mercy and for grace. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody online. Uh, let's see. Who does Mother Thomas, Mother Jane Thomas, Minister Jeff and Sister Sonia. Sister Melissa Johnson, Sister Jewel Jones, Sister Secretary. Pastor Henley, you are breaking my toes. Uh oh, look out now. I thought I was breaking up. <laughs> Sister Joyce Griffin, our, our evangelist is, is uh, online tonight. Elder Douglas Hosmer will be here tomorrow night, y'all. Tomorrow, Friday, and Sunday. Amen. Amen. We're looking forward to looking forward to him. God bless you, Elder. Annette Howard is here. Tyrone Law. Ty is back. All right, Ty. Deacon Joseph Taylor's in the house. Praise him. And the Taylor family. All right. So uh, without question, without question, uh, we all need, we all need from the pulpit to the door. And I emphasize that there ain't no big eyes and little U's. The devil fights us just like he fights you. I want to talk back to me, somebody. Yeah. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to save. Come on, talk back to me, y'all. Let's uh, let's go to let's go to Psalm eighty-five, one through twelve tonight. Psalm eighty-five, one through twelve. Let's read what the psalmist says uh, here tonight. Lord, thou has been favorable unto thy land. Thou has brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou has forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou has covered all their sin. Selah. Thou has taken away all thy wrath. Thou has turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thy anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Wilt thou not, let's read some, verse number six again. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. God has been merciful to this, to this audience. He's been merciful. He's talking about those who have been in Babylon in captivity. He's been gracious and kind enough to bring them back to their homelands. He's taken away his wrath, and, and he's trying to restore them. Uh, he's trying to restore them, and, and uh, they're asking... Are you, are, you, are, you, are you still mad with us? Are you going to be mad with us forever? Or wilt thou draw out thy anger to all generations? We feel your anger. We feel your wrath. It doesn't feel right. Will you, will you, will you, God, will you revive us so that we can feel what we felt when we were in right relationship with you? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. We want, to, we want to feel you. How many of y'all want to feel uh, the Holy Ghost like you felt it when you first when you first got saved? How many of you want to feel, have a, have a uh, renewal, reinvigoration of, of the Holy Ghost when you first received it? That's, that's what revival, that's what revival is all about. Lord, take me back. The songwriter said, Lord, take me back. Take me back to the place where I first received you. I'm, what, what, is, what does it say? Uh, I'm sorry that I've strayed so far from you, Lord. The 
just just take me back. Take me back. Have mercy on me. Take me back to that place where I first believed. That's what revival, that's what the, what the meaning of revival is all about. Lord, I, I want new life. Life brand new. I want to clean, so clean me up. Lord, have mercy. Verse number eight says, I will hear what God, the Lord will speak for. He will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not return again to folly. Yeah, don't, 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 don't go back when, when he, he gives you that clean slate. Keep it clean. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring forth out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Look at somebody and say, revive us again, Lord. Let's go to let's go to uh, Psalm fifty one. Let's let's go to Psalm fifty one. Very familiar passage of scripture. We all know that this this is David in the uh, in the instance that he had fallen. You know, David David had his struggles, like humans tend to do. He had his struggles, but the, but God called him a man after his own heart because David was smart enough in all of his tomfoolery to still be connected to God, to find God. Even when he messed up, he found God. He went, he went to find God. And he was contrite. He was humble. He, he had humility. He was contrite. Let's look at, let's, let's read uh, Psalm 51. The Bible says, have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out thy transgressions. God Almighty, God, God is merciful to us. Blot out, y'all remember how mama, how mama used to, to, to blot out your shirt when there was a special spot on your shirt? Mama would say, go get me a, go get me a towel. She put some kind of special solution. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was bleach or uh, uh, tide or whatever. She'd go get that, that, that cloth and she would fold, fold it up uh, in, a, in a knot and she would just block that spot. Not the whole shirt. She just blocked that spot until it was clean, until that spot was wiped out. Can't you hear David? Can't you hear David here? Lord, blot out. Blot out my transgression. Don't you want God to blot out your whatever whatever ails you, whatever's healing you? Don't you want God to blot out your transgressions? David's not hiding. David is not somewhere with his head in the sand. David realizes that God sees him wherever he is. God sees and knows. He knows that he has transgressions. Just like you know you have transgressions. And just like we all need to, to ask God to blot out our transgressions. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities. And cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. You you just you know the, the, uh, during revival time you just you just need to tell it like it is. Be honest with yourself. One of the worst things you can do is lie to yourself. What you say and then believe it. I like that. Lie to yourself and then believe it. If you if you're gonna be truthful to anybody, you ought to be truthful to yourself. David was smart enough to acknowledge his transgression. My sin is ever before me. It's always present. Uh, when I would do good, it's, it's, it's there. It's, it's haunting my trail when I would do good. I want to do the right thing, but the right thing doesn't always come up. I'm, I'm not always, for some reason, I'm not always able, David says, to, to overcome my, my flesh. What does he say? What does he say? Against thee and thee only 
have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judges. I think this fifth verse, verse applies to all of us. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. All of us were born in sin. I don't care what side of the tracks you were born on. I don't care how much money your, your family has. I don't care how much property they own. I don't care how many cars they drive. All of us were born in sin. We are on an equal playing field when it comes to being born. Now all of us need to be born again. Yeah, I, I know you got that problem now, but all of us need to be born again. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Uh, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bone which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. That's right. Look at somebody and say all. Oh. Come on, y'all. Put it in the chat line. Say all. Oh. Ooh, I like this, y'all. Created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Can't nobody do it but Jesus. Can't nobody do it. But you know something? You know something? He's not going to do it against your will. You're going to have to become vulnerable like David was. David was vulnerable and put all of his business in the, in the street, put all of his, uh, his business before God. got to a point with all of his mishaps, with all of the things that, that we can uh, account to David, all of the things we can, in, in the end, God said he's a man after my own heart. Me too, Annie. Oh, uh, look at it, look at it. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. I know I messed up. I, I, I know I goofed up, Lord, but please, please don't take your spirit from me. Please, please, just, would you forgive me one more time? I'm, I'm asking for mercy. I'm asking for grace. Would you forgive me one more time, Lord? And what? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what revival is all about. Restoring unto us the joy of our salvation. You know, you can sit in church, you can sit in church or you can live this life and become complacent. You can sit, sit in church and be going through the motions. Yeah, you're here, but your mind's not here. You're, you're in the house of the Lord, but when you leave the house of the Lord, you don't think anymore about church or anybody else or God or anything else until you return again. And so that's, that's why we need revival. We need revival to refocus us. We need re revival to, to, to recharge us. You get weary sometimes. Have, have, you not, have you not grown weary sometimes? Come on, you can be honest with me. God knows you have. Sometimes you've been weary. Sometimes sometimes uh, I, we've had people to say they were, they were on the brink of quitting. They were on the brink of giving up. Like the psalmist, the psalmist said, my foot was almost, my foot had almost slipped. I was almost gone. I was almost out of here, y'all. I was all, I was almost through. I had, I had, I had had enough of church. I had had enough of going to Bible class. I had had enough of going to Sunday morning service. I had enough of ushering. I had enough of singing in the choir. I was through. I was on my way out. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I saw folks, I'm doing all that I can do, and, 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 and I don't have everything that they have. I don't have all the material goods that they have. I don't have all the money that they have. I, 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 can't, I, I, I come to church on the bus. They're driving three or four cars, and I'm, I'm still coming to church on the bus. The devil will cause you to look like the psalm, to look at the prosperity of the wicked. Oh, but Lord have mercy. You better come to yourself. You better come to yourself like the song. Of it. He says, he said, uh, if I can paraphrase, then I heard the hammer beat three. 
Lord have mercy. I, 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 then, I, then I heard, I heard the, 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 the synthesizer. I heard the keyboard. I heard the drums going. Lord have mercy. I, I heard the songs of Zion come yes, going forth. Yes. My, my, my. I heard somebody saying, praise the Lord. And, and it awakened something in me. And I came to myself. I came, I came to myself and ran back to my first remembrance. I came to myself. Asked the Lord for forgiveness so that he could revive my spirit and revive my soul again. There's some folks that are sitting in church depressed, despondent, and in despair. But all of the God that, that they have, all of the God that we have on our side, they have, they have allowed humanity uh, to, to supersede. The Holy Ghost. The word lets us know the time and chance happen to us all. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. You're going to hurt sometimes just like everybody else. Sometimes you're sick like everybody else. We, we go through uh, episodes in life like everybody else. Children acting up. Got more bills than money. But, but you better take hold that, that God says, I've never that somebody said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see begging bread. Yeah, he's an all-time God. I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. I'll fight your battles. But you can't get weary. You can't get weary. You you got to stay in the fight. And and a, and a good revival, a good revival, uh, brothers and sisters, a good revival uh, that helps us to remember all of it. Help us, helps us to remember why we're in this thing. Why we serve the Lord. We were talking about serving the Lord for the past three, four weeks. Good revival helps us to remember the, the significance of serving the Lord and why we do what we do. I'm going to say praise the Lord. He is worthy. He is worthy of all the praise tonight. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, a, a good revival helps us to return to God. You, you, you want, to try to, want to try to bring as many backsliders as you can to the house of the Lord during a revival. In, in prayer that it, it will reawaken that which is in them. That they will get revitalized, that they will get refocused and come in and, and live this thing like they should live it again. No, you, don't, you don't quit because you have issues. You don't quit because you have problems. Everybody in here got something going on. Everybody in here got something going on. You got to find a way. You got to find. You got to find a way to be a survivor. You got to be in survival mode at all times. I will survive. I will conquer. I'm more than a conqueror. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. You got. You got to. Uh, you, you got to uh, rehearse it. Good revival helps you to rehearse. Helps you to rehearse to get get back. Lord, take me back to the place where I first relieved. Yes. It involves turning back to God and seeking Him with all of our hearts. Let's go to let's go to Second uh, Chronicles. Very familiar passage of scripture, 2 Chronicles 7 14.
That's right, Evangelist Johnson. Evangelist Johnson said, wake up, check yourself. Amen. Lady D says, all. Oh, come on. Come on, y'all. Sister Rodney says, all. Oh. Uh, all right, let's read. Let's read uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 4, 14. Uh, this is a uh, uh, different version from, than what you're reading from, but it has the same essence. The Bible says, Then if my people who are called by my name, first of all, will humble themselves. Let's stop right there. You know, uh, you, have to humble, you have to humble yourself and realize where you are. Everybody on the mountain top all the time. I don't have anybody in the, in the, in the house tonight that's on the mountain top all the time. There's all the time you're on the mountain top. First of all, we have, we have to humble ourselves, humble ourselves to be truthful. Let me say it again, to be truthful to yourself. Worst thing that you can, worst person that you can lie to is yourself. Don't lie to yourself. I'm not suggesting that you lie to, lie to anybody else either. Just for the record, just to get the record straight. But surely, surely don't lie to yourself. All right. Uh, after you humble yourselves and pray, talk to God. That's how, that's the way we communicate with God. We pray. That's our line of communication. We tell God what's on our mind. We tell him what our issues are. He already knows, but he's so delighted when you tell him, when you bring your issues to him. He's, a, he's so delighted to hear the concerns and, and, to, and to take care of the concerns of his people. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Oh God, I really want to know you. I really, I really want to know you uh, in the fellowship of your suffering. God, I really want to, I really want to see you for who you are. I really want to know that when I have issues that that I have seen you, and I know without a shadow of a doubt that you are going to reward those that diligently seek you. Seek his face, seek his face. Put some time in. Put some time in to seek his face. Put some time in to see what his agenda is for you. A good revival helps us to find out what his agenda is for us. There's a whole lot here. Not only are you seeking his face, but what you going to do? Turn and turn from their wicked ways. Get all of that evil out of you. You know, you know all of that, all of that stuff that that you do when you ignore the Holy Ghost. All of the things that you say when you ignore the Holy Ghost. You're gonna do your own thing regardless of what the Holy Ghost is saying to you. No, you got to turn, turn from your wicked ways. What happens when you do all of that? He says, "I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land." Because God does not dwell in the midst of sin. God hates sin, right? He does not dwell in the midst of sin. You, you can't have a revival until you begin to repent. Revival is a time for repentance. God, I am uh, uh, duly sorry for everything that I've done knowingly and all those things that I've done unknowingly that have been offensive to you. Like David, please restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Blot out my transgressions. Come on and talk back to me. Revival is needed to restore spiritual passion. You know, uh, sometimes, sometimes uh, when the newness wears off of the thing, you know, uh, you know, everybody's excited when you get a new car. Everybody's excited, man. You got a big smile on your face. You enjoying all of the toys in that car? After about six weeks or after about two car notes, 
the newness, the newness starts to wear off, and you and you take that car for granted. You ain't, you're not checking the oil like you used to check it. You're not checking uh, the well, see whether or not there's antifreeze. You're not checking to see whether or not there's window washer fluid. You're not checking the, the, the sound when the brakes are running. You're not checking. So some, I'm awfully afraid that that happens sometimes with us. When you've been saved for a period of time, sometimes the newness wears off with us. Ooh, come on and talk back to me, somebody. Like a new car, like a new house. Sometimes the newness wears off. You have to go to the car wash. You have to go to the detail shop and get it detailed. So it will give you that same fervor that you had when you first got it. Hmm. There's something about a car wash that makes a makes an old car uh, seem like a new run like a new car to me. We're working in revival. We're working to restore the passion. The passion that we once had, the passion uh, that that we want to want to uh, stir up, stir up the stir up the gift that is in us, stir stir up the Holy Ghost that's in you, stir up the Holy Ghost. It's, it's been dormant, it's been quiet too long. Stir it up, stir it up, stir up the Holy Ghost. Stir up, stir it up. Man, if you stir it up, that might help. That might that just might help you. Uh, to to obscure the, those problems that you're having, it just might help you uh, not to let your worries be your worries. It just might help you. To help your brother and sister, if you if you stir it up, you might be able to help somebody else. Because you do you know that you can't help nobody else if you if, if you all uh, can I say jacked up? I think I just did. Yeah, you, you can't help nobody uh, until you help yourself. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Get a song in your heart. The songs of Zion. Get, get You know that song that, that used to uh, float your boat when you first got saved? Remember how you used to, used to run the aisles when you first got saved? Remember how the word of God had you standing up uh, in awe? That's right, Aunt. Remember how you couldn't wait to get to church? Couldn't wait to get the Bible class. Couldn't wait to get the prayer meeting. Couldn't wait to get the Sunday morning service. And 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 if you are of a certain age, it was Sunday morning service, it was afternoon service, and it was night service. Back in the day, after all that long day, oh, I forgot to mention Sunday school, didn't I? And back in the day, back in our day, uh, prayer meeting was on Monday night. So after we did all of that on Sunday, we found ourselves back here on Monday night and was excited about it. Then, then we find out, then we come back on Wednesday. Come on and talk back to me, somebody. Because we love, we, we love being in the house of the Lord. We love getting what we were getting. And, 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 then, and then on Thursday, we would go out and fellowship with other churches. And then sometimes, Friday night, uh, Doc would throw in a good old Saints meeting. You weren't always happy to come to Saints meeting, but you know, <laughs> depending, on, depending upon what was on the agenda that night. Then, then, us, then after all of that, after all of that, us young people would go to somebody's youth service on Saturday night. Everybody used to have their youth services on Saturday night. We'd hang out all, all night when, when, we were, when we were young enough to fellowship. <laughs> When we're young enough to fellowship, we'd hang out all night long after the service. Now, now when they say, man, I'm ready to go home and get in the bed. <laughs> Bill, do you want to go get some coffee? No, no. no. I don't even drink coffee, man. I'm about ready to go home and get in the bed now. But we did all we did all of that because we were happy, we were excited to be in the house of the Lord. We used to have, we used to have uh, a two-week revival every every October. And we would be here every night, every night. Excited to be here to get what we were getting. 
Lord, take us back. Take us back. Take us back, Lord, to the place where we first. Take us back where we, uh, when we were excited, when we were, we were passionate. Passionate about the things of God. Don't, don't let us be like that person who's had the car for, for a while and the newness has worn off. Oh, you ain't a baby no more. We, you know, we got, we got to throw you out. That went over your head. I don't. Don't, don't get rid of the baby because it's not a baby anymore. Come on and talk back to me, somebody. And and we need revival in the house of God because when we get revived, we can go out and do what we have been commissioned to do. We need a revival to break out in the city. Yes, hallelujah. Well, if the people, if the people of God, if the people of God would ever realize who we are and who's, if the people of God would ever realize what our responsibility is, He says to go out and compel them. Give them a, give them a good reason to come in and do what you're doing, so that they can come in and duplicate themselves. That's, that's how God's program is supposed to work. Uh, we can revive and we go out, bring others in so that they can be renewed and revived also. Oh, there needs to be a revival in the church, y'all. There needs to be a revival in the church. I'm awfully afraid the newness has worn off. I'm awfully afraid that life has beat some of us down. My God, it's, it's, it's that time. It's that time. Yes. Uh, it's question time now. We, all, we hold the questions until the end now. Hmm? Okay, I'll, I'll try to repeat the question. We, For those of you that don't know, we've had technical difficulties tonight. I don't know what it is with our our Wi-Fi that decides to act up uh, around here. I don't know what that is. We need to call and, and uh, get on somebody. Uh, should I say check that out? All right, go ahead with your question. Who was that that had the... Go ahead with your question. I'm going to try to repeat your question so that our cyberspace audience can hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I think it might help if people would stop saying it's a new day. Every time you bring up something about the old landmark or things that Mr. Bell did or mm -hmm. things that, that kept the church moving, uh, you know, I was talking to someone when we went home, we didn't have anything. We weren't talking about what was going on at the church because everything's going good at the church. I mean, so I think we should stop saying it's a new day now and maybe go back to what you just, um, to your point, go back to those things that we used to do that kept us strong, that help us maintain a stability in the church. That brought, we, we, it wasn't weary for us to be in church. When we wanted Not at all. So maybe we need to go back, take me back, Lord, as you said to your point, to where I first met you. And some of the things that we used to do were healthy. They were good, mm -hmm. and they brought unity, and we were happy to fellowship with one another. I just keep that term. It's a new day. What does that even mean? Uh, for those of you that are, that are in cyberspace, Evangelist Tanya is saying that uh, uh, she doesn't like the term necessarily a new day. Uh, she's saying that that she thinks that we perhaps we should uh, adopt the the things that we. Or go back to the things that that we did when church wasn't cumbersome, when uh, it wasn't it wasn't hard for us to, to go to go to uh, church or come or participate in all the activities that we participated in. She's saying that that those were good things that perhaps um, uh, perhaps that kept us strong, uh, uh, keeping up with a lot of the things that we kept up with. I don't know whether that was a question and that that was more of a comment than a a question. Uh, am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions tonight? 
question for you was, can we go back to that? Well, you know, the, to, to, to the point that I'm trying to make tonight, I think that we, we do uh, go back to those things when we talk about revival, real revival. And certainly, certainly some things have changed over the years. Uh, technology's changed. Certainly a lot of things have changed over the years. But uh, uh, once again, let me say, we shouldn't allow the newness, the newness of a thing to wear off. Um. It's, a, it's an easy thing. It's an easy thing with all of, of, of our sensibilities being challenged the way they are in this world for us to forsake some of the things that we want to do, some of the things that were good for us. Uh, so we have to, we, we have to uh, re- try to restore our passion for the things of God. If you restore your passion for the things of God, then it won't be cumbersome to come to church. You know, I'll, I'll turn off the TV. I'll miss my program. I'll DVR. Most of us got DVRs anyway, right? Take your program. Come on to church and, and see your program later. Man, we used to we used to have a ball. Man, the fellowship was off the chain. Right. Yes. Off the chain, man. Uh. Who's, who's got their hand up? Ann. Well, those are things that we should those those are things that that we should fundamentally be doing all the time. Uh, you, 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 without question, you should be reading your word. We certainly can do those things. The, the question for the, the cyberspace audience was, uh, is it possible for us to go back to the, to the basics? Um, say that again. Uh, cell meetings. Now, you know, there, there, are, there are some things, there, there are some things that we have discovered uh, as, as time goes by, each generation has discovered something that, you know, uh, is, is unusual for that generation. But there are, there are certain basic things that are fundamental to our, our walk with Christ and fundamental to our salvation. We should always be fellowshipping. We should forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. We should be in church. We should be reading our word. We should be praying. Those are things that are fundamental to, to living and serving the Lord, living a life and serving the Lord. Uh, we're, we're not going to, we're certainly we're not going to do everything that we did. Uh, not everything, but, but those things that, that are good for us. You know, uh, you know back in my day, uh, you know, it was, it was a sin to wear red. Hey, when my mother, my mother and father came in, it was a sin to wear red. We're not, we're not going back to that. But those things that, you know, uh, I would really be standing up here talking about ain't, ain't nothing pretty about an empty church, wouldn't I? You know, uh, I told y'all that, that uh, back in the day, I used to have to go to my older sister's house to watch television because it was frowned upon. And Brother Lewis will tell you, it was frowned upon back in the day to, to have a television in your house. So uh, we we uh, we have have uh, gotten rid of some things because we know better now. But but fundamental things, fellowship, prayer, reading your word, hearing the word, assembling yourselves together. Those are things that should always be a part of us. 
Let me see what they're saying, what they're saying in cyberspace here. Lady D is saying that uh, God is a God of progress. He said you would do greater. Let's see. <laughs> uh, she says, no, we ain't going back that far. I'm, I'm just saying what was said in the comments. I'm not. Uh oh, uh oh, you're getting some pushback. You're getting pushback, Lady D. You're getting pushback in the, in the house tonight. Who had their hand up? Oh, Brother Terry, I'm sorry. Yes. And and that holds true. That's what I mean. And that, that's so true. We see it. We've seen it year after year after year. Folk come in on fire, burning for the Lord, doing everything, working in every auxiliary. You, you can't you can't keep them down. They want to do everything. Get a little knowledge and experience and a little age. I'm not calling anybody Asian. <laughs> I'm just saying that happens at times. We uh, we do lose the zeal, but that's what revival us. That's why we need to have a revival, right? We need to be, re be reminded. We need to be reminded what our, uh, our our directive should be. We need to be reminded of why we live the way we live. We be, need to be reminded that we were transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need to be reminded that we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. And, and never lose the passion. Never lose the passion. Even in the middle of the vicissitudes of life, never lose the passion. Oh, but that takes focus. That's why we need, that's why we need a revival, y'all. That's why. Revival. Amen. That's why you need to come to revival and let your hair down. Come with a repentant heart and go all out for God. Go all out. Be like David was in that 51st Psalm. Lay it all on the line. Because he knows already, right? Yes, Lay it all on the line. Lord, take me back. I'm talking about spiritually. Spiritually, take me back. Spiritually, take me back, Lord. Amen. All right. Uh, who else? Let's see. All right, I don't see any questions in the chat. I don't see any questions in the chat. We, I got a whole lot more here, but you know, it's that time. Is there anyone that wants to be saved tonight? Anyone that wants to be saved tonight? Be born again of the water and of the spirit. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost by evidence of speaking in tongues. All right. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Those of you that are in cyberspace, come on out to our revival. Our revival starts, our spring revival starts tomorrow night. Thursday night. Come on out tomorrow night. Elder Douglas Cosmo. Elder Douglas Cosmo from New York will be here with us tomorrow night, Friday night, and Sunday morning. And we plan to have a great time in the Lord at our spring spring revival. Amen. Come on, come on out. Uh, those of you that are seeking the Holy Ghost, come on out. You can get it. Uh, even if you're, if you're at home now and you want the Holy Ghost, uh, just ask the Lord, lift up your hands, tell the Lord you repent, and ask him to fill you with the Holy Ghost right where you are. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, we're ready for you. We'll be, ready, we'll be waiting on you. When you get here to baptize you in the name uh, that is above every name. At that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. Amen? Amen. All right. All right. It's offering time. It's offering time at the temple. And it's in the house. It's offering time at the temple, everybody. For those of you that that uh, that don't know in the in the uh, in cyberspace, we had technical difficulties tonight. That's why you got the angle that you have. I am uh, uh, coming from my laptop 
right here on the pulpit. So that's why it's off to the side. So you got that angle as opposed to the angle that you're normally accustomed to on Wednesday night. Hey, y'all ready? You can give online at dollar sign CTAFC or Christ Temple AFC.net online dot giving. Amen. I, I hear you, Dick and Taylor. Still got to hear the word. So that all that matters. Amen. All right. Um, let me say it once again. Our revival starts tomorrow night. Listen, call somebody. We want to have at least a, a hundred folks for our hundred anniversary. This is the hundredth year of Christ Temple. It would be so nice if we had a hundred people to visit us during our revival. Take some of these tracks that uh, that that uh, Minister Tanya has generated. We got them back there in the best of view for you. Take some tracks and invite somebody out to uh, be in our revival with us. Tomorrow night, beginning at seven o'clock. Be here. Be here. Be here. Bring somebody with you. In Jesus' name. All right. And then on um, May the 2nd, we have a National Day of Prayer. It's May the 2nd. We have a National Day of Prayer, uh, which will convene from 12 to 6. And we'll have a number of people that will be praying in 15-minute increments like we did last year. Let me see. Got two Spanish segments beginning at 2 and 1 at 4.30. We have two Spanish segments for our National Day of Prayer. You can uh, view all of these things online, barring we don't have any technical difficulties. That's uh, Thursday, May the 2nd. Put that on your calendar. Put that on your calendar for, from 12 to 6 Central Standard Time. Thank you. Oh, that's right. You can't give me the announcements because you don't have an internet signal. Okay, now I got to see. Let me. What do I remember? Our council council is coming up this the second weekend in May. It's going to be in Springfield, Illinois. Get your reserve your rooms. Reserve your rooms if you're going to the council in Springfield. Um, what else is coming up? Get your tickets if you haven't got your tickets for the for the gala. Amen. The deadline for the tickets is June first. Get your tickets for that. Uh, woo! Oh, the Isha Isha. 66th annual convention is your the 66th annual convention will convene. What's the dates on that? I see it in the I don't see the dates. It used to be during cleanup week. I think they are they've already had cleanup week. Give me the date, somebody, for the uh for the is your youth convention. Oh, would you look at that? What? Somebody said it was up here? We have Law Enforcement Day, May 18th. From 10 till noon, we need volunteers to help us to feed the officers that will be here. And uh, we need some ministers here if, 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 if there are personal concerns that the officers have so that you can pray with them one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to be praying for them collectively. And if we need some ministers here to pray for them one-on-one, -on -one, whatever concerns that they might have that they can't speak to us openly about. Uh, um, all the speakers for the convention. Oh. Yes, for our uh, 100th convention. For our 100th convention, we got Bishop Jerry Baldwin Jr. Thursday night. We got sister, Evangelist Tanya, Tammy August on Wait a minute. Bishop Jerry Baldwin is on Wednesday. Tammy August is on Thursday. Bishop Daryl Farris on Friday. Bishop J.E. Moore is on Sunday. He's going to uh, close us out on Sunday morning on Father's Day. 
and and on the gala. Somebody give me a drum roll. All right. Our presiding bishop, the Honorable Bishop Lambert W. Gates Sr., will be here on our gala uh, to lend his special gravitas to that event. Get your tickets, get your tickets. Oh, have, have you found your dress yet? Have you found your tuxedo yet? Yeah. Amen. It's going to be a 20s, 20s style formal affair. Uh, so you still have time to shop and get your get your uh, outfits for the, the gala. See somebody on the convention team to get your tickets. They're just $100. I said that not sort of nonchalant, didn't I? But you have you have time. You have time. I, I find that people people do what they want to do. People buy what they want to buy. I have found in life. Uh, they, they get what they want to get. Yeah, so go ahead and get that ticket. Go ahead and get that ticket. The last one. Last one is save the date for the prayer summit. Noonday prayer summit, which, which will convene August the 29th through the 31st. See uh, Sister Charlene Porter for further details on that August the 29th through the 31st. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we have an upcoming annual meeting for the credit union and elections for the credit union on May the 19th. At after service, they're saying 145. It's upcoming. All of you that are credit union members, officials, and such, we have elections and uh, the annual meeting on May the 19th. We also are going to have a church election for a trustee. We have one trustee slot that has expired that we need to fill, and, we have, and so uh, we've already asked for interest to see whether or not anybody's interested in running. For that slot, there are certain qualifications that you have to have to be a trustee at Christ and Bible College Faith Church, and uh, you will be vetted by the convention, not the convention committee, but the uh, the the, uh, the election committee to see whether or not you meet the qualifications to be a trustee, and then we will have an election, uh, hopefully soon, to fill that slot of the vacant trustee position. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee Sally Fields. The Asian Convention is April the 25th through the 27th. April the 25th through the 27th. Does anybody know where it's going to be at? Joliet. Joliet. It'll be held at our Diocesan Bishop's Church, Christ of Joliet, on those dates. Let us all stand. Our Father, our God, we thank you for uh, tonight. We thank you for your word, uh, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We thank you for blessing us all to be here and to partake all of those that were online. We thank you, O oh God, for the, the uh, rich word that you have deposited in our hearts and in our minds. We ask you now that you would bless us not to be only hearers of thy word, but also doers of thy word. We ask you now that you would bless our revival this weekend. Save somebody, Lord. Save somebody, oh God, I pray. Bring them in from east, north, south, and west. Save somebody by your mighty power. And we ask you, oh God, that while you're saving uh, others, that you would reinvigorate us, revive us again, oh God. Oh God, renew the right spirit in us, Lord. Bless us, oh God, that, that uh, we would feel like we did when you first uh, filled our souls with the Holy Ghost. You revive us, give us that energy, Lord, uh, to go out and to transform the world. We'll be so careful to praise you and give you thanks for what you're going to do in that regard. We ask you once again that you would uh, help us help those who are on our sick list. Continue to remember Brother Fred Davis. We ask for healing in his body, Lord. We know uh, we know what, what, what science is trying to say, but you are science. My God, and we ask that, that you would heal his body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask your God that you would continue to bless Evangelist Rose Johnson, uh, Sister Kavita Mahone, Sister Magdaleno. Brother C.O. Cotton, Sister Deaconess Morris, Lord. Um, my God, is that list up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? We ask your God that Charlene Porter, Sister Edie Appleton, Lord, you know of what they need. Deacon Eddie Thomas, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless them all, God. You know what, what all their consistent Jayla. Please give us a miracle with Sister Jayla, oh God, we pray. Help all the caretakers that are caring for her. 
in the name of Jesus. And all of our sick and afflicted, help all of their caretakers. Give them physical and mental strength. Uh, Mother Jesse Hawkins, God, touch her body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mother Luberta Jones, touch her body in the name of Jesus. Uh, Aunt Bonnie, touch her, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. We'll thank you as you bless us now to take our lead, keep us and guide us from earth, all hurt, harm, and danger. Bring us back at the next appointed time. And we'll thank you, God, and give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You almost have this list memorized.